Welcome to part one of this video series where I want to share with you some of the brain hacks that I've been learning through my training with Z Health, which is a neurological approach to movement. And I love incorporating all of these things into my yoga classes as well as my personal practice. And you'll have noticed that probably if you've taken any of my classes recently. The thing with these hacks, all of the things that I'm going to be sharing with you in this video as well as the forthcoming videos, is that they're really easy. They're the kinds of things that anybody can do. They don't require a huge amount of strength or flexibility or athleticism or anything. They're simple, but they are so effective. And it's really just all about strengthening the connection between your muscles and your brain. So let's get started. I'll kind of explain this one as we go. We'll begin in a cobbler pose or baddha konasana with the soles of the feet together and the knees out wide. And take a moment just to get comfortable here. So you can bring your feet away from your hips to make it a little bit more comfortable or maybe even have some cushions under your knees. Make sure you can sit up nice and tall and begin to just bring your awareness to your breath. Maybe even close your eyes. Take a few slow, calming breaths through the nose. Allow your belly and your rib cage to expand with the inhale. And don't force anything, just let your breathing be totally natural. And this is really the main thing that yoga gives us to help our brain understand that, hey, everything that we're about to do and everything that we're doing right now is safe using the breath to bring ourselves into a place of calm. And you might also like to set an intention. This also is not just a woo-woo yoga thing. It actually helps us use our conscious brain to tell the subconscious brain that, hey, this stuff is important. All right, and if your eyes are closed, you can go ahead and open them up. And just notice how you're feeling in this stretch. So. Hopefully, if it is difficult for you, you know, those breaths that we did helped you to relax. The first thing that we definitely want to do is to be in a state of restful calm through the nervous system, but not to passively stretch. And so that means we're going to add some activation to our muscles. So that means just gently pressing the outsides of the feet down. And maybe the knees, you want to press the knees down as well. So the area that we're looking to build mobility and flexibility in here is the inner thighs. And so in their elongated form, so as long as they get, so keep holding that, keep breathing, all right? Uh, the, the way that we can help increase the signal from the muscles to the brain, the afferent signal, is while we're breathing and we're in a calm state, is to activate in an isometric hold. So that means we're not moving, we're just holding the muscles, using the muscles while the muscle is in its lengthened form. Now, without moving, keep breathing, but we're gonna just do the opposite. So instead of pressing the feet and the knees down, imagine you can lift them up. And they probably won't move, but you'll probably feel different muscles engage and the sensation is gonna be entirely different. So just as before, we're just gonna hold that for about five to 10 breaths. Just noticing. And so there's nothing wrong with stretching passively, necessarily, as long as we're not harming our joints in the process. But that doesn't necessarily send a strong signal from the muscles to the brain when the muscles are not active. So passive stretching can be a great way to just relax, but it won't build any mobility. Certainly not quickly. All right, go ahead and come out of that. Oh, maybe shake it out. And what I want you to do is just sitting wherever is comfortable. Just take your arms out wide like a T. Bring the fingertips up towards the ceiling and pull your fingertips as close to your head as you can. And then like you're scooping something up, pull now, go into wrist flexion. So bringing the fingers underneath the arms and again, pulling them as close to your face as you can. And move back and forth between those two a few times. So this is extension 
when we're in that position where our hands would be if we're like in a plank pose and then flexion pulling them like we're scooping something up one more time just get a feeling for this super super active so just really going for it as much as you can these muscles and so this is one way that we can warm up our wrists and help with our wrist mobility. We'll just take that same movement though, bring your hands back behind you and you know, the fingers can be pointing in whatever direction feels best for you. Maybe have a little play around and see what feels best. But whenever you're happy, we're gonna do the same movement. So press your fingers into the mat as if you're trying to go into flexion, that scooping movement and breathe here. And maybe you even feel the muscles beyond your hands and fingers and forearms activating. Maybe you feel your upper arms and maybe your shoulders and all sorts of other muscles activating. That's because really our muscles don't work in isolation. Everything is all connected, as you know, I'm sure. So just keep breathing here. Keep pressing. Go one more breath. Good, then release that just like before. Stay where you are, but try and now lift your fingers up off of the mat. So going into that extension. And this is probably gonna feel a lot harder because our extensor muscles are smaller than our flexor muscles. But this is helping the flexor muscles, which is the ones that we use when we're on our hands. Breathing here. Ooh, good job. And then maybe just kind of sway back and forth on those hands again and just see if it feels any different. See if you like, you know, hey, oh, my wrists feel really warmed up. All right, so staying where you are, we're just gonna take our legs into a 90-90 position. So left knee bent and coming inwards with the left ankle out off of the mat and right knee out to the right with the right foot kind of in line with the left knee. Hopefully that makes sense. Kind of hard to describe that, but just look down and hopefully you've got like a 90 degree angle. That's why it's called a 90-90 with your both knees and with your hips. So with the back leg, what I want you to do is begin pressing the knee and the ankle down into the floor. If that feels uncomfortable, you can grab a, you know, hit pause on the video, grab a little blanket or something so that you feel comfortable. Because remember the number one job of our brain, the only thing that our brain really cares about is to keep us safe. And anything that might make the brain, your subconscious brain, think, oh, I don't know if this is safe, is something that we want to avoid when we're looking to build strength, mobility, coordination, balance, any of these things. So make sure you feel safe and comfortable and happy. But, well, comfortable, I'll talk about that later. But let's release pressing the knee down and same as before, lift the knee up. So it's not gonna move anywhere, right? It's just that action and activating those muscles in a different way, breathing as you go. So finding a little bit of a stillness and a calm in this challenge as we lift that knee up. Don't let it go, keep lifting. I let it go. I let mine go and I was like, whoa, keep it, keep it going, Adele. <laughs> All right, let's release that and just switch over. So 90-90 on the other side. Ah, ready? So press the right knee down this time. And I forgot to say on the other side, but you know, if you're leaning over, that's fine, but just you know, play around with where you want your torso to be, where it feels like this is the area that needs a little bit of love and attention. And that's the point, is it's not necessarily comfortable. We want it to feel safe, of course, but not necessarily comfortable because this is really all about bringing ourselves outside the comfort zone. This is where the brain begins to learn. It goes, oh, something's happening. Something new is happening. And our cerebellum, which is kind of like the mini brain, it does so many things. It loves novelty, so new things, outside of the comfort zone things. So we're breathing to stay calm, even though it's a little bit of a struggle. All right, let's release that and then lift the knee up. This is the hardest one. 
breathing. Lift that knee up. Uh, it's so interesting to feel all the different muscles that come on as well. Good, let's take one more slow, smooth, steady breath. Lifting the knee up off the floor. Good, and then release that. Lovely, so just roll over your ankles and come into a little squat. And just lift the hips up enough so you can step the left foot to the back of the mat, lower the left knee down, rise up into a little low lunge. And what I always like to do is bring my hips back over that knee and try and get my pelvis into a kind of neutral position. Hold onto that neutral position with my pelvis, hands on the pelvis as much as possible so that I'm really getting a stretch through the front of the left quad. So grab that blanket if you need it for the knee. I want you to reach back and see if you can hold on to the ankle of the left foot. If that's just not doable for you, you keep it down, okay? That's absolutely fine. So if you're pressing, if you've got hold of your foot or your ankle, or if it's on the floor, we're gonna press into the hand or the floor, squeezing that left glute and breathing. So hopefully, really feeling a nice stretch, and we're not going for anything intense here. Remember, it's when it comes to that comfort zone and leaving it, we only want to step just beyond it, you know? If you take a giant leap and you're like way, way, way beyond your comfort zone, then that can just cause a little bit of anxiety and, and stress that's not helpful. Our brain goes, I don't know if this is safe. And it'll do all sorts of things. You wouldn't even, you wouldn't even believe it, it's crazy. All right, now, without moving, can you pull your left foot away from your hand? and breathe. And maybe you notice some changes occurring. Maybe you feel like actually you're able to go a little bit deeper. And that is exactly what I mean. That these things can create changes in your body in literally seconds. I can't wait for you to see the other videos that I'm preparing for you in this series. All right, so release that and come into a half Hanuman. So straighten the right knee or bring it just towards straight. And if it's too intense for you to have the, the foot completely flexed, go ahead and release that, find some position. But I want you to have the knee more or less straight, not hyperextended if you're hypermobile, but begin to press down the heel into the mat. So you should be feeling the muscles along the back of the legs really activating here. And if you're really looking to build more range of motion in your hamstring or especially in your calf, then, you know, you just find that end range of motion where it starts to get, you know, edge of the comfort zone, right? But pressing, pressing down. So activating that muscle, we're sending that signal to the brain that says, hey brain, this is safe because we're breathing. It's important because we set an intention. And there's a purpose to this range of motion because we're active. All right, so without moving, yep, we're gonna try and lift our leg off of the floor and hold it for five to 10 breaths. And this, this little flow is just for you to get an, uh, an idea of some of the different poses that we do in our yoga practice, or maybe if you just do a little bit of stretch before you go for a run or whatever, and how you can bring this, this awareness to it this little brain hack. But of course you can do it in any pose. In fact, let's, let's go a little bit outside of the normal stretches. So come back up into that low lunge and lean your weight back into the left knee. Can you just pick up the right foot just enough to bring the tops of the toes onto the mat? So we're like a little ballerina or something like stretching through the top of the foot. Now, can you just gently press down and what I want you to also do is not just pressing down, but imagine you're trying to press your foot away from you. Okay, oh, I got a little cramp, got a little cramp. So sometimes that happens and that is a sign that you've not just stepped outside your comfort zone, but taken a gigantic leap. So just come back out, come back to the comfort zone and see if you can just take a little smaller step out. So pressing the toes away from you, like you're trying to get out of that toe point. Lovely. 
And then, little balance challenge, can you lift the leg up and now you're trying to pull your toes towards you. Again, if you get a little cramp, just come back to the comfort zone and then see if you can find just a smaller step out of that comfort zone. And eventually, you know, like all things, it's gonna grow and grow and grow and soon you'll be able to do like whoa, full force and it'll be nothing for you, all right? Step that right foot flat back down, tuck the left toes under, lift up into a crescent lunge. Just give it a good stretch out, just a nice normal crescent lunge. We're not gonna do anything here. And as you exhale, lower the hands down, framing the right foot, step the right foot back, come into a plank, take an inhale. As you exhale, bend the elbows to lower yourself all the way down onto the mat. Untuck the toes and extend your arms straight out in front of you and lift the fingertips up towards the ceiling. Now, I don't wanna crush my microphone and do weird things to the sound for the video, but you can also bring your chin down to the chip down to the mat as well. So you're looking at your hands. What we're gonna do is stretch in the same way our latissimus dorsi. So can you externally rotate, bringing the pinky fingers down towards the floor, but letting the elbows like do the movement. So imagine you're trying to get your pinky fingers down towards the floor, but only through moving your elbows, not the wrists. And pull the ribs down and in, like somebody's put a corset on you and it's pulling it tighter and tighter and tighter. So breathe still, but maybe you're starting to feel a nice stretch through the sides of the back and the sides of the arms, sides of the shoulders. And my glutes are also active, I just noticed. That's just, I think, habit for me. Keep my low back nice and happy. So if your low back is bothering you, just give your glutes a little squeeze, see if that helps. All right, so just like before, we're gonna stay where we are, but can you lift your arms up off of the mat? So we're not lifting, it's not about what the chest does, okay? So keep the chest down, keep your chin down, see if you can just get the, and keeping the elbows straight, of course. Just trying to lift your arms up off of the floor as you breathe. Still externally rotating, so elbow creases twisting up towards the, the sky. Ribs still pulling in. Good. Whew. Slide your hands back, tuck the toes under, press back. Maybe find a little downward facing dog, just give everything a good little juicy shake wiggle. Look forward and just walk your feet back up to a little squat, the front of the mat. Maybe roll the wrists out, give everything a little shake. We'll just do all that on the other side, all right? So hands go down, hips go up, step the right foot to the back of the mat, lower the knee down, shift everything back over that right knee, hold onto your hips, squeeze the glutes, make sure the hips or the pelvis is more or less neutral. Then shift forward to get that stretch through the front of the right thigh. So maybe you reach back with the right hand and grab the right foot, or you're just pressing it into the floor and we're gonna hold. As you press, 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 like you're trying to straighten your knee against that resistance. So as I talked about at the beginning, these stretches, it's about kind of like pushing into a resistance and then pulling away. So sometimes the resistance is a floor, sometimes it might be your hand, Sometimes it could be a weight or a resistance band. And that's where we can really begin to bring even more of that novelty, okay? And sometimes, as you're gonna see in future videos, go ahead and now pull the foot away from your hand or away from the floor. We're gonna add on, we'll be adding on to these stretches, these same stretches, adding some of our other brain hacks. And that's also just bringing more of a challenge so that your brain has more interest in learning. All right, so release that. Shift the hips back, straighten the left leg. Prop yourself up however you need to get. Get the ankle positioned wherever you feel like it's most comfortable. Wherever it kind of needs to do the work, you know, where it just, yeah, you know what I mean. Just needs a little TLC and then press that that heel down. 
And my hypermobility, I know a, a lot of you joining me will be hypermobile as well. We're all different, but for me, my hypermobility shows up in my knees more than any other part of my body. And this is something that's actually really helped. So I'm very mindful about not hyperextending the knee, but bringing it to a position where it's straight. As I build the strength in the muscles in this range of motion. So not hyperextended. But still nice and straight, so it looks pretty, <laughs> right? Now, same as before, we're gonna lift up and breathe. Good job, release that, rise on up. Let's get, let's see how far we can go. Let's see if we can avoid any cramps with this foot stretch. So top of the left toes to the mat and begin gently pressing the toes down into the mat, but also imagine you're trying to like, like you're trying to flick water on somebody. You're, you've got your foot in a puddle and you're, you're trying to like play a little joke on a friend and flick water on them. Um, so pressing the toes away from you. And I'm so, so, so big on bringing work into the ankles and the feet and the toes. The next video in this series is all about ankles and how much our ankles help us with our hip mobility. So really, really good to not neglect those guys. Now, same as before, lift the foot up and <clears throat> really pull the toes back towards you. So like you're just trying to be like the most poetically looking ballerina <laughs> with your toes. A little bit of a balance challenge as well. If you're struggling here, no worries. I've got, I've got a series, a video in this series on balance as well. <laughs> All right, bring the top of the left foot down, tuck the right toes under, lift up into a crescent lunge, just stretch it out. Take a nice deep inhale. As you exhale, bring the hands down, step the left foot back into your plank. Squeeze the glutes, find a nice straight line here. Take an inhale. As you exhale, lower all the way down to the mat. Something a little bit different this time. You're gonna take your right arm out wide and look at it. Make sure that the elbow is in line with the shoulder and your elbow is bent into a 90 degree. So like a little cactus and you're gonna let it slide away from you as you roll over onto the right side of your body. So for now, you can just let the head relax, let the left leg prop you up wherever it is, wherever it needs to be to prop you up. Just where you start to feel the stretch, now you're gonna press that right elbow into the floor as you breathe. We yogis, we do so much that like tightens and gets our pecs like quite uh, sort of, um, yeah, strong in a short position. So this is really good. All right, now we're gonna lift the elbow up. All right, and you are genuinely Superman if you can actually lift your elbow up while you're like rolling over onto your side. Breathing. Good. Three, two, one. Roll back over and same thing on the left. So just check that the left elbow is in line with the left shoulder at a right angle. Then take the left cheek to the mat as you roll over onto the left side of your body just to a point where you get a stretch. Make sure you let the elbow kind of slide away from you as you roll over so that the pec that chest muscle is stretched, and then press gently as you breathe. Can't wait to show you the add-on that I've got for this in a future video. All right. 
right. Now can you lift the elbow off of the floor? Just the action, of course. You're doing a great job. These things aren't so easy. But they are effective, and as you've noticed, you just need like five to ten breaths on each side of the hold, so pressing into the resistance in a way. Roll back over. Once again, slide your hands under your elbows, tuck the toes under, press everything back. Maybe find a little downward facing dog to shake it out when you're ready. Look forward, bend the knees, step or hop the feet back to the front of the mat through that squat, just to sit back down onto your bum and bring yourself into that Baddha Konasana position where we began. And so you're ready to just repeat this flow if you like. Otherwise, take a moment to take a few deep breaths here, finding a sense of stillness and calm once more. Again, this is one of those things like the old yogis like knew it intuitively. You gotta take time to relax, but from a neurological standpoint, we also we need rest. We need relaxation and stillness in order to really integrate the things that we've learned. So thank you so much for joining me. Remember to download the PDF that I've created for you so that you can learn all about all of these brain hacks and get just tons more information than what I've been able to squeeze into this video. Check out Z Health if you wanna go deeper on this subject and learn a little bit more, or like, no, a lot more. <laughs> and please come and join me over on Move With Adele. I upload two new videos every week and I always incorporate the brain hack that I think is best for whatever the goal of that particular flow is. Uh, so sometimes you don't even notice that, it, that you're doing something that I would consider a brain hack. Uh, I don't talk about it like I have done in this video, it's just a normal flow. Sometimes you do notice it though, you may feel a little bit silly, but these things really, really work. I hope that I'll see you in the next videos in this series. Thank you for joining me.